Welcome to a large model showman's engine. This one is part 65. Repairing the leaking steam pipe, removing the ball from the boiler check valve and refilling my oil cans for the next steam test. Here's the clip from the last steam test which shows the steam feed to the pump leaking very badly. I freely admit that this was entirely my fault and I was utterly incompetent on this occasion. There are two or three things that I need to do before the next steam test and the first one is fix this leaking union. So once again attempting to get my body inside the traction engine under the canopy is a difficult job but finally I managed to free the pipe. And here is a clip of the bunker after I removed the steam pipe from the T-piece at one end and the pump at the other end. I received a comment from a viewer and the viewer was basically saying if you think that's difficult you want to try working on a small two inch scale one. I've done that, worn the t-shirt, seen the film, read the book and you have to believe me that working on this traction engine is far more difficult than working on a small one. I also have a one and a half inch scale showman's engine and that's very easy to work on as it's sat on the bench right in front of me. On with the job, it's time to stop the steam leak once and for all. You can clearly see here what the problem is. It's a comedy of errors really, insufficient flux, insufficient heat and insufficient silver solder. Before commencing this job, I would just like to say the solution is not just to apply lots more flux to the part, heat it up and re-silver solder it. This union cone has to be removed. And the easiest way to do this is to lightly clamp the part in this small vise. Then take the entire assembly into the outer part of the workshop and sit it on the brazing hearth. Because of the heat involved, you definitely need something to hold the pipe whilst you unsolder the fitting. The job is simple enough. I light the blowtorch and apply the heat to the part that's leaking. It doesn't take long before the end of the pipe gets very hot and the fitting starts to glow and it's at this point that I grab it with a pair of long nose pliers and with very little resistance the union cone can be easily removed from the pipe. The next part of the job is just a case of waiting for the part to cool slightly and then quenching it in a tub of water. The next part of this job is very important, I need to thoroughly clean up the end of the pipe. I started by using my one inch belt sander to remove the bulk of the remaining silver solder. Until it looked like this. Then I finished off the job by using a small needle file. When silver soldering the parts have to be very clean indeed. And thinking about it, that also applies to soft soldering. The solder will not want to stick the parts together if they are dirty. The next part of the job is to apply the silver solder flux. This is called easy flow number two. And to any experts hovering over the keyboard to tell me that I've applied too much flux, yes, I know that. This is a tutorial, and here, because it's a tutorial, I've applied too much flux. But never mind, it's not exactly Armageddon. There are quite a few things that are much more important than silver soldering a pipe or applying the flux to it. I removed the excess and started the silver soldering process. This clip shows the point when the flux takes on the watery appearance and starts to run. That's when you apply the silver solder. And yes, I'm putting too much on, but I'm taking no chances this time. This is just a gratuitous shot of the part cooling. The next part of the job, once it had cooled slightly, was to dip it in the tub of water. The thermal shock dislodges some of the oxidisation. No acid bath this time. First of all, I clean the part with a piece of Scotch-Brite. Then I use my polishing spindle to clean it up thoroughly. This is not just a cloth wheel. It has some abrasive soap applied to it, which really cuts through the oxidisation and gives a very good finish once the job's done. I don't really need to go any further, this would be more than adequate, but I thought I would show the brasso method, and I'm actually cleaning the other end. Originally, after silver soldering this pipe, both ends were clean and bright, but when hot steam travels down this pipe, it quickly tarnishes. I fitted the pipe back in position on the T-piece, and here's the other end connected to the pump union. 
I still wasn't happy with the performance of the injector. There are two check valves fitted from the injector to the boiler. That's the way it was when I bought the engine. And originally I removed the check valve that's down by the injector itself. But then I refitted it in order to connect the steam pump into the circuit. I've done quite a bit of work on this check valve, but internally things don't line up quite as well as they should do. For instance, the hole through the shut-off valve doesn't line up perfectly with the hole inside the casting. I'm going to see what happens regarding the injector when I remove the ball from inside the check valve. It's a phosphor bronze ball and I just poke it out with an Allen key. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this ball is possibly slightly too big. But for the moment, I'm removing it and I've put it in a safe place. And just in case I forget where I've put it, it's in the plastic box at the back of the driving truck. I refitted the top cap and now I'm tightening the main union nut. And here, just in case, I'm checking that the top cap is tight. And it is. Back into the workshop now, I'm refilling my oil bottles that I keep in the traction engine. These are exactly the same as the ones that I already have in the workshop. The larger of the two I use for steam oil, and that's the stuff I would use to fill my cylinder lubricator. And the one on the left contains bearing oil. Both of these oils I get from a company called Hallett Oil. The details are on the cans. Just in case you're thinking, why do I use such a large oil can for the cylinder lubrication system that takes less oil generally than the other one for the main moving parts? And the answer is quite simple, just like a girlfriend I used to have. The smaller can is much easier to lubricate the moving parts and get into inaccessible places. It's simple enough when you think about it. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.